Hey folks, what's up? So today I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about unit testing. I've had some people um, accuse me of saying you should never unit test and um, that is blatantly not correct. It's, uh, that's totally false. Um, but I do um, in testingjavascript.com with the testing trophy, I do recommend that your unit test probably will cover, uh, you'll, you'll do less uh, with unit tests and spend most of your time integration testing. But there is, uh, there are definitely really good reasons to unit test stuff, and so that is what I want to to show you. And when you can unit test, um, when you can take some some complex logic and stick it into a little function that's like totally pure and stuff, when you can have a situation like that, then uh, testing actually is really awesome um, and can really help you in the development of your library, whatever you're you're building. So, um, without further ado, I. Um, just came up with a contrived example, want to validate a phone number with JavaScript, there's a regular expression. Um, I agree with this comment right here, don't use a regular expression to validate complex real world data like phone numbers or URLs or emails or uh, URLs maybe, that's, that's be okay, but like um, emails, um, just send them an email, send them a text, um, you know, give them a phone call, whatever. That's, that's the only real way to know whether or not a phone number is valid. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be doing this. Um, where this can be useful, where validation of stuff like this can be useful is to say, hey, this doesn't look like a phone number, but don't block people from adding um, an email or whatever because that is really frustrating if you get this wrong. So anyway, I just pulled this uh, regex out and put it into a is phone number thing. And now I'm going to module exports is phone number. And <clears throat> sweet, so now we've got this um, is phone number um, function that we can call and it will tell us whether or not the string we give it is a phone number, which is fantastic. So let's see what we um, how we would unit test this. Now, uh, it's not just like regular expressions that you can unit test. Of course, there's you know a myriad of things that you can do. This is just an example. Um, so here we're going to um, add index.test, or here, I'll like the test directory index.js. Um, and then we're going to, uh, we're, we're just using common JS. I, I'm not bringing in Babel or anything. Uh, or anything. So we're going to say um, is phone number equals require uh, from the index. So I'll just go up. Um, and then we can say do, do, do um, test um, valid phone number. All right. So then we'll expect is phone number. And here we'll just take one of the examples that they have as a valid format. Whoop. So we'll say, is that a phone number? Um, to be true. All right, and we'll just do a whole bunch of these. So I'm actually going to just copy this. Um, and keep watching because I'm going to show you a, a better way to do this. Um, we'll start with this, but we're going to we're going to improve this um, significantly. To be true. All right, so all those formats should be valid. And then we'll have another test invalid phone number. And we'll just grab all the, well, yeah, we just do a couple. What would be invalid if it has, <clears throat> here, actually, we'll do it looks valid, except it has an underscore, I don't know, um, or it has the letter A. Um, everything else is, is valid. Um, or it has, oh, here we'll do, it has this, except it's a minus. And these should all be false. Okay, great. So um, then we'll go ahead and run npm or npx just watch. That'll get our, oh, we're not, yeah, okay, watch all. I'm not in a uh, git repository right now, so watch is not going to work. Okay. Uh, string test is not a function. Wait, what? String dot test isn't string is, is it? Okay. This is my go to website. I'm going to share this with you. This is my go to website for any time I want to do regex stuff. All right. Okay. You test is on the regex, not on the string. So here, I'm going to take this 
say um response phone number regex and then we'll say phone number regex test on that string do 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 there we go sweet now we got passing tests hooray great so um what's so cool about this well what's cool is uh, that it's actually pretty easy to look at this and say oh here are the valid formats and here are the invalid formats uh, and so unit testing is really nice, uh, especially when the unit that you're testing has no dependencies, because then you don't have to even mock any dependencies or anything. If it's just a pure function, um, then you call into it and it works magically. I, I really love uh, this kind of testing. And um, yeah, so one thing that I don't love about this is all the duplication going on here. So we have uh, expect for every single one of these. What if one of these like a false slipped in and we open this file and we're looking at this they're like okay yeah all this is good and all this is bad um, and then we break something to break this use case because we didn't notice that said false instead of true um, that has happened having um, and, and this is kind of a general principle of testing having tests that um, or, or code in tests that looks basically the same for a lot of assertions or, or a lot of tests if they have a lot of the same setup and things it makes it hard to maintain um, because you can't see what's the difference between these two. Like what, what is the si significance between um, this and the uh, variance in here that causes this, this one to be false? Um, and <clears throat> lots of the reason why that's kind of uh, more difficult to identify, like in, in this, this is a really simple case, but if you have like you're testing middleware or something and you've got a lot of duplicates set up for your request and response mock objects and things um, and then there's like one difference in those things and that is the key element if there's a key element difference between uh, two things then um, that's a scenario where you're like okay I need to um, make that difference come alive more I want I want to make it um, more prevalent uh, more obvious so that uh, when people come in and they say okay what's the difference between true and false here it's very obvious whereas here because we have so much noise with all of the extra or duplicate stuff it's hard to identify the differences so this is where um, uh, just actually has um, docs let's just find where um, their API mm. okay Oh, actually, here it is, test.each. Test so Jess has this thing called test.each. You can provide it a table and it returns a function, which you call to provide a name, function, and timeout. Um, so it's actually very similar to the, um, uh, to the test thing, except for allowing you to provide this table. So what is this table? Um, well, it is an array of arrays, or uh, you can use a tag template literal, and, and then you can do this string madness stuff. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I, I don't really like this. I think it looks funny. Um, so I, yeah, I don't ever use this and I don't like the array of arrays. Um, cause I think that also looks kind of funny. So I don't use that either. Um, but, uh, actually, you know, it occurs to me that maybe it doesn't have to be an array of arrays. Maybe it's just an array of things. Hmm. Let me just try that really quick. We're going to say s dot every, is that every? Each. Each. And here are our cases. And we'll say, um, <clears throat> here actually, we'll, we could probably just insert the value itself here. Whoop. And then we'll um, call that, right? With valid phone number. Then we give it our phone number and we'll expect that to be true. And then we'll pass the phone number in here, do, 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 phone number. Let's pop up in our test suite. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll show you the, the thing I was planning on showing you later. But now what we can do is we could say, here, let's extract all this. We'll say valid phone numbers as valid phone numbers equals that. Then I'm going to actually just do this. Comma, 
and then we'll just do this and we'll do that and we'll add a comma here and then we'll go drag it up there Bink. and then we'll thank our lucky stars for prettier yay sweet um and it looks like it's it has a unique test name for each one of those so let's see they have a mechanism by which you can insert things so we'll say percent percent i is a valid phone number sweet and man hmm. do percent s then yeah there we go nice all right so the difference there is we um took one test that had a bunch of assertions we made a bunch of tests out of it um i'm fine either way um, I, I think I like this better because the test output um, shows more stuff. And if things break, then uh, things will work. Um, Martin just said, couldn't we use a for each over the array? Yeah, let's do that here. So uh, let's say um, we'll do cost invalid phone numbers equals this array. And we'll pull these out and we'll say brink and bow, 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 bow. And just, whoops, multiple cursors does not like that. Okay, so then we could say um, invalid phone numbers dot for each. And we'll just do this doodad. E false. Ooh, oh, and phone number. There, sweet. So that works. So let's look at the difference here. With this one, we see the uh, the phone number in the test name. And the nice thing about that is if we did something, it's gonna be hard to, to actually break the regex because I don't understand what that regex is doing. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break the input instead. So if I break this, then I'm going to get an error uh, that says, hey, this is a valid phone number. That's what we expected, but it's actually not. So you need to either fix this or fix the um, code so that it does. So um, that's the error message we get there. If we did the same, with this, then we're gonna get an error that does not tell us anything useful. Invalid phone number. So basically one of the elements in your array, which could technically be a very large array, um, one of those is, is invalid. And then you have to go through a process of elimination to figure out which one of those is, is an unexpected input. So that's why I would suggest doing something like this <coughs> over something like this uh, because yeah, you could wind up in a in a situation where you, you don't know which one of those things is busted. Um, alternatively, we could actually just do this ourselves. Hmm. Excuse me. Um, and then we could say template literal here and phone number is an invalid phone number. And then um, we can fix this doo -doo, and we get a breaking test and we can see that ex exactly. So this test.each um, is basically just an abstraction on top of this. It adds a couple of nice things to it, um, which makes it easier. But the problem that we have here is um, if I wanted to do only one of these, um, I'd say not only, um, and I'm still getting the other tests run not just the one that I want to uh, want to run. And I'm actually not sure how to solve that um, with a test.each. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's possible to solve that with test.each either, which is unfortunate. Um, and this is where I can bring in my personal favorite. I don't actually use test.each. What I use is, we'll do, um, oops, uh, cases equals require just in case really cool project by um, um, Jamie Kyle um, sorry I blanked on his name for a second but uh, <coughs> he created this before test out each existed I'm not sure whether he's still using it personally but I I still like it a lot so cases is very similar we'll say cases and here we're going to put the title first so we'll say uh, valid phone numbers and then we put our test case here and then um, as the last argument we're going to put our test cases and this can be an array or it can be um, uh, object where the um, test title 
uh, where the key is the test title and the value is any of your options. So we're going to start with an array just to make things simple and then I'll show you um, some other things. So I'll, I'll just stick valid phone numbers in here. And then inside of this tester function, we're going to put this and we'll get our options. Hmm. And well, here we'll just start with calling this phone number. See if that actually works. And we'll get rid of this only. And we'll break this again so everything's all squared away. Cool. So what um, just in case does is it will um, it, it actually makes a describe block inside of it. Um, and that's the title of the describe block. And then all the cases <coughs> um, have their own test inside of that describe block, which is actually kind of nice because we have a lot of repetition here. I'm not sure at what point this turns from valid to an invalid phone number. And so, well, I mean, I have to look carefully, but with this very clear separation, it makes that a lot easier. So I can say now, um, we'll just do the same thing, cases, and we'll say invalid phone numbers invalid phone numbers and to be false and now it's a lot easier to see that separation but we're missing our titles which is unfortunate so um, the way that just in case works for uh, test titles is um, this options uh, parameter actually can take an array of objects and um, the properties on those objects are um, like have some significance so um, let's do Let's do this. We're going to say valid phone numbers. Here, actually, I'll, I'll do one really quick to make it easy. So we'll say phone number. Um, we'll just do that. And then we can say title is um, whoops, just the same thing is valid, I guess. <coughs> Sweet. And then we're um, this is now going to be our options object, and that will have options dot phone number. So this option object represents that object right there. Oh, and this actually still needs to be an array. Sorry, there we go. So it's an array of objects. And here we go. Title. Oh, I think it might be name. There we go. So now we get that is valid. Sweet. OK, so um, sorry, one second. I got to um, take care of something really quick. I'll be right back. I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, um, great. So now we can provide this array and give it a name, and then our test can have a name. Um, so it's more useful than case one, case two, case three. Uh, another thing that we could do instead of this array, uh, I'm going to do some more with this uh, in a second, but we could also do a, an object, and that could be <coughs> the key is going to be our, um, our uh, name of our test case. So, do -do -do -do. We'll take this and make that the key of our object. And then the value will be the options. So that works just as well. And so if you wanted to do it that way, and I do, and I'll show you um, a little example of that here in a bit. So that's cool. Um, so let's go back to the array form here. And I want to take all of these. Oh, uh, one other thing that we can do in these objects um, is, and, and this is where you get benefit over using test.each, is we can say only true. And now it's only going to run that one test case, which is great. Um, we could also say skip, which is awesome. And I don't know if to do is supported yet. Yeah, to do is not supported yet. Um, I don't think just even supports to do yet. That's coming, I think. Um, to do basically just um, it's basically like skip except it marks your test as uh, something that's forthcoming that might be supported to do no nope, not yet I'm pretty sure there's an issue open for that um, so yeah you can skip and you can dot only and that's nice okay so let's turn this array of phone numbers into this object so that I can get nice titles or nice test names I guess so we're gonna say uh, valid phone numbers dot map phone number 
and we'll do phone number and name is, well, we'll just do phone number. There we go. Valid phone numbers. Woo! There's our list of val valid phone numbers. And we can do the same thing. We'll just do this same map magic. And then we'll pull out um, options. Say options dot phone number. Sweet. All right, that's awesome. I love this. Okay, so let me show you a couple other places where I use this on a regular, or, or like other places where this is useful. Um, like anytime I'm unit testing um, something that has more than like uh, one variant on an input and an output, then I'm gonna be doing something like this because it's just so useful. So um, let's see. We yeah, here we go. I showed this. I think it was yesterday. Um, uh, something that I'm working on at um, PayPal. But here is a situation where I'm using just in case to um, test something that generates JSON for various CSS. And here I'm using the object form uh, because each uh, one of these is kind of discrete and I, I want to describe um, what is it about this test that actually matters. Um, but the really nice thing is if I were to uh, convert this from the just in case form to regular test scenarios, lots of these tests would look really, really similar. There'd be a lot of code that looks the same and it'd be harder to identify what's the difference that makes that really matters. And so here I can see input and output. It's just really, really nice and easy. Um, so here's one, that's, that's one situation where I use this. Um, another is uh, match sorter, uh, this project that I have. <coughs> And let's see, if we go to our S, index.js. So here I um, wrote these tests before I, um, before Jamie created just in case, but here I'm doing basically the same thing. So it's an object. I have um, my test title, then my input and my output. And uh, it makes something like this really, really nice and easy to um, for people to contribute because somebody comes in and they're like, oh, I want to add acronym support. And so they just add a single test case. Um, here's an example of my input. Here's my output. And um, yeah, it just makes uh, this a lot easier. Uh, so then I just have this little doodad. Um, yeah, this is basically like just in case. I'm pretty sure just in case. They also use the describe block. Uh, they do a couple other extra things in there, but that's basically how it works. We just say for each of these tests, we're going to get the title. We'll destructure input output only in skip. And if it's only, then we'll test only. If it's skip, then we'll test skip. Otherwise, we'll test. And here's our test function. It's going to call match sorter with the input. And we'll expect that it equals the output. Uh, so here, I, um, I don't have my uh, test uh, function um, like I do in, oh, I just, I removed it. But uh, in my test, um, uh, in my cases call where I can have my test function and say what I expect and stuff, I just kind of encode that directly in uh, my little abstraction here. Uh, another case where I do this is CSS, um, in, no, no, what did I call it? Um, RTL, RTL, CSS, JS. Um, so if we go to source and tests, uh, here, actually, let me tell you what this does first. <clears throat> So it uh, takes a CSS object and converts um, any right to left um, uh, CSS rules and switches them to be left to right. So padding left is now padding right. This is useful for uh, right to left languages. So you can author all of your styles for uh, left to right languages. And then when you go uh, to ship your, your production code, uh, you can enable this in a plugin for your CSS and JS library, whatever. And then you can go, um, uh, it'll, it'll swap everything so it looks nice. Uh, you can disable it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So the way that this is tested, though, is it, like it's really just a pure function. Give, hand me an object of CSS, and I'll give you back the reversed uh, version of that stuff. So if we go, no, not scripts, source, and then tests, and index. Um, here, I. Yeah, I also did not have uh, just in case when I wrote this, but it's the same thing uh, as Balrog. Yeah, I forgot about this. Um, yeah, so it's it's not quite as nice, but if you look at it, um, it makes it really easy. So we've we've got this array of arrays where um, I, I didn't even want to title these things because like uh, it's just so so many things and and lots of them don't really need a title. It's like oh, 
Like if I wrote a title for this, it'd be padding left turns into padding right and padding right turns into padding left. Like I can see that pretty clearly. So I didn't want to title them. Um, so yeah, then we can just add a bunch of these. And as people ha find bugs and stuff, then they can just add, um, add more to the bottom. Uh, it's really easy to add new test cases and do test driven development and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, we've got this array of unchanged um, out output. So content left and content right, those should not be changed, like stuff like that. Um, and then I have my abstractions there. So you can check that out if you want to, but just use just in case, it's really good. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you. Um, just in case is awesome. Uh, looks like it hasn't been updated for like a year. Um, so it's pretty stable. Um, I've been using it for a long time and I love it. So yeah, does anybody have questions or anything? How is uh, Jest different from Cypress? So uh, Jest runs in Node and not in the browser. Cypress runs in the browser. That's a pretty significant difference. Um, and I, I recommend using Jest for your unit and integration tests and Cypress for your end-to-end -end tests. Uh, and then static testing with ESLint and Prettier and Flow or TypeScript. Um, and you can take my course at testingjavascript.com because it's great. I'll go ahead and post a link for you because I'm nice like that. Um, and that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope that was entertaining and interesting and helpful. And uh, yeah, unit testing is great. Um, you, you could use just in case, even if your unit has dependencies, you can do mocks and everything still works. Uh, just fine. And I, I have done that on occasion. Um, and uh, yeah, unit testing is awesome. Uh, I tend to spend most of my time in integration tests because that's where I get the most bang for my buck. But um, I, I'm not going to integration test every variant of possible um, inputs and outputs for this phone number. I'll, those are a bunch of edge cases and stuff. So I'll unit test all of that. And then I can integration test the more common uh, common cases and just use the same phone number every time because I have confidence for my unit test. Um, so yeah, I'm going to jump out. This was fun. I hope you have a nice day. And I will see you all later. Bye.